Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game SO. Taking our continuing series on the Mr. FPJ project, more specifically the DE25 Nano. And that's a little bit of a misnomer, just kind of using the nomenclature for my Mr. video. Because in front of you is a Jurassic DE25 Nano they're going to be unboxing on the channel today and going over all the hardware. Now that does not mean in any way, shape, or form this will become a Mr. 2 or a Mr. Pro. It is possible that it does. It's possible that I bought a $300 paperweight. Honestly, I am fine with either of those options because it makes a fun video and I get to share more information on the DE25 Nano for you. And honestly, if this does become a thing, this allows me to do day one videos when the first thing is running on it. And because Mr. FPJ and FPJ Gaming in general is such a big part of my channel, I wanted to make sure I was ready. Don't forget to fire involved though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But honestly, I hopped on grabbing a DE25 Nano just because I wanted to discuss the technology on the channel with actually having something to put in front of my camera. Because I am a filmmaker and I hate just using website captures to explain things when I can put a physical object in front of you. Now, I want to be very clear about something right off the top. Do not go out and buy one of these things today. It is as likely that it doesn't get used as it is likely that it becomes Mr. 2 or Mr. Pro or whatever you want to call that maybe Mr. 69 would work. I just grabbed this thing so we could talk about it. I would be ready, but I don't want you to go out, grab your wallets, and think that you're going to be getting the next frontier in FPJ gaming technology. It might happen. It might not. As far as the uplift and specs on the DE25 Nano, sure it isn't a ton more of logic element, you're getting about an extra 30,000, but the overall bandwidth, the jump up to Agile X5, as well as the bandwidth on the RAM being not a limiting factor like it is on the DE10 Nano, would be a very big upgrade. Think about stuff like N64 and Sega Saturn cores and other more powerful hardware which I'll get into later on in the video. But the fun thing is, and the interesting thing is, this is the identical footprint of the DE10 Nano, down to where those screws and posts are. All those standoffs are going to line up perfectly. So if this thing did become a Mr. Pro or Mr. 2, it would allow the accessory makers pretty easy access to be able to start designing boards because they could at least use the same footprint. Now on the bottom of the board, not really much interesting to look at whatsoever. You have your micro SD card slot in the exact same space and some small components. You'll also see there is a rivet here for the fan. So in the future, if you did want to remove that, you'd want to be very careful because this thing does ship with a fan as well as temperature monitors and an active fan system. So it is running hot enough that it does want to monitor its own temps. Now on one end, just like Mr. FPJ in the DE10 Nano, you have that actual Ethernet port, but it has been moved over to USB-C ports here versus all of the other ports we'd have on the DE10 Nano. And that definitely is a nice quality of life improvement if this thing does become an FPJ gaming board because USB-C is a better, more modern standard that a lot of more people are going to want to work with. Now around the other side, you're going to have that barrel jack, very familiar. You're going to have a connector on the right that'll probably never get used for anything if this is a gaming related board. And then you have your HDMI port in the center, just like you would have on the DE10 Nano. But just so you are aware, this is still going to be a limiting factor on the DE25 if it becomes a board because it is just 1080p out. It is not going to do 4K natively. Now you have options if this does become a gaming device you could use the RetroTrink 4K to direct video mode and allow it to scale and that would be a really nice time but of course I know some people are going to be disappointed it's not native 4K. Additionally, you could use the Pixel FX more 4K doing the exact same thing in direct video mode, but the makers of Pixel FX are actually working on a 4K scaling top hat for the DE10 Nano that allows you to get 4K out by putting the scaler directly into the Mr. FPGA triple stack. And I've talked to them, and when there is a test version potentially available, they will send me one so I can talk about it on the channel because I love the idea of that in concept. Now taking a look at the DE25, you'll see here I have removed the screws from those posts so we can take the little metal shield off so you can get a little bit closer of a look at the actual board in and of itself. But I will not be removing the fan to take a look at the Agilex chick underneath because one, I would have to remove that rivet and two, it really isn't all that interesting. But it is interesting that it does generate enough heat to require that heat sink out of the box. 
And if we take a look at a little bit of a better angle here, you're going to see that there is going to be RAM on board, both for the ARM side of things as well as the FPGA side of things. So you wouldn't really have to worry about putting a RAM stick in if you didn't want to. Now, again, if this does become an FPGA gaming board, you might want to go dual RAM. We have a ton of GPIO here on the header, so you can kind of pick and choose what it is that you were trying to build if this is a project. And trust me, the makers out there will definitely come up with new and innovative things when it comes to USB hubs, when it comes to the IO boards on top for analog video, for scaling, for everything else. But it is really fun that it is the exact same design. If you're wondering, that's what the chip looks like underneath. Really nothing exciting to see. Just be aware that Agile X5 is a complete new family of FPGA chips for Intel and Altera compared to the Cyclone 5 that would be on the DE10 Nano. And if we take a look at the two of the boards side by side, you're going to see again, the footprint is one to one identical. You can line up the DE25 Nano under a Mr. Triple Stack and literally down to the sub millimeter measurement, it is going to be exactly the same. Now, if this does become a new mister, obviously it would require new cases because the port shapes are different. It would require the USB hubs and top pads because those will also be different as well. But if we actually just take a look at one of Mr. Add-on's boards here, this is the IO Direct Pro. It lines up 100%, at least on the screw post. Now, of course, you're going to see that the pins do not line up whatsoever. So this would require, of course, a whole new set of boards to actually potentially make it something like a Mr. FPGA 2. But people like Mr. Add-on's and other makers out there, I'm sure if it becomes an actual gaming device for the future, we'll be on top of making sure we have every single accessory you want out there so you can kind of build your own Mr. FPJ experience if it is in fact going to be on the DE25 Nano. But again, the reality is there is no guarantee that's going to happen. This is just fun for me to talk about because everyone wanted to see the physical object and to see it gone over. So now you know what it looks like. It looks like a DE10 Nano with a couple extra chips and that Agile X5 underneath the heatsink versus the Cyclone 5 on the Mr. FPJ DE10, which never had a heatsink in general. Now, as far as what a potential Mr. 2 on a DE25 Nano could run, that's kind of up in the air. There are some presumptions we could make, and there's some things we can eliminate, as I said in previous videos. You are not playing PlayStation 2, you're not playing GameCube, you're not playing Xbox, nor would FPJ really bring anything to the party that would be better than software emulation. Really, that generation of consoles will just be better served by real hardware or the software emulators in general. But something like the Hyper Neo Geo 64 would be a good candidate for something like the DE25 Nano. And even though it only has seven games and that basically emulates perfectly in MAME. I would love to see an FPGA core for something like this. So I'm just going to be talking about the platforms that I would love to see come in the future. And I've told basically everyone I know who makes cores, if they ever want to take a stab at the Hyper Neo Geo 64, I have the hardware here. I will loan it to them for free. Even if they end up having to be a little bit destructive with it, I have spares and I would happily sacrifice one motherboard if we could actually get a Hyper Neo Geo 64 core so that everyone can have close to the real hardware experience as far as that is concerned and honestly i've got a lot of different hardware sitting around if someone was wanting to take a shot at a 3do m2 core then i have all the arcade and console hardware anyone would ever have to take a look at to be able to produce a core as well and this should be at least technically on paper feasible and before you ask yes i would be willing for a core maker i trust to be destructive with one of my arcade boards because i have spares and sometimes you have to make a little bit of destruction to try to rebuild something for more people or something like the midway Zeus could potentially work on an FPGA core because the actual GPU hardware on the board is an FPGA chip in and of itself and the CPU really isn't anything that special. Now again, I am not doing the math on these things. I am not an FPGA engineer. I'm not popping over to Cordis to write these things. I'm just taking educated guesses based upon how I understand how the hardware works versus how the DE25 Nano works. So that is not a guarantee just because you see me talking about this footage that it would ever come to a DE25 Nano or any other FPGA project in the future. I'm just doing some back of the napkin math and saying what I think could work. But if I had to pick one, a 3 do M2 core, if anyone ever wanted to make it would be my absolute dream because at this point in time, MAME emulation is incomplete and it is a little slow and you cannot emulate the actual console games or any of the diverse demos I've released for free. And the reality is there's a ton of fun stuff out there that could fit, but the real question is, does anyone actually want to do it? This board or any other potential board that could be a Mr. FPGA 2 or Mr. FPGA Pro needs developers to actually want to make things for it. And even though I'd love to see a 3 do M2 core, the question is, does anyone else out there actually want to make it? 
because trust me, if I had the coding expertise, I would sit down and do it, even if it took me years to bring it to everyone. But the reality is I can't code because it is not a visual medium. You write lines down, you expect to actually have something happen with them where I need to be able to imagine in my head the type of work I'm doing and how it actually ends up on the page or on the screen. Some people are visual, some people can understand code. Every time I do it, it takes me 10 times as long as anybody else. And it's basically held together with band-aids, spit, duct tape, and wood screws. But that is the Jurassic DE25 Nano. It might be Mr. FPGA 2. It might be Mr. FPGA Pro. It might be something I put up on eBay in two years and try to get as much money back as I can from the purchase price to try to make myself whole. But the reality is it's a fun thing to talk about in a video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.